In this first Getting Started project video, we'll make a tool holder and show you the basic workflow when using the Bantam Tools desktop CNC milling machine. We'll be using the included accessories, flat end mill, and the aluminum stock that shipped with your machine. Fun fact, this piece of aluminum was cut out of the same sheet as your machine frame. To begin, plug in the included USB cable and power cable, turn on the machine, and launch the Bantam Tools milling machine software. The software will first ask you to home the machine. Click Start Homing. Once that's complete, click Initial Setup, open file, and then locate the G-code file you downloaded from the project guide. We'll see the toolpaths appear on the right side in the preview, and then we'll select our quarter-inch flat end mill from the drop-down menu. Next, we'll load our probing tool into the machine. To calibrate a tool length and perform a tool touch-off using our conductive bed, click Install Tool, and then the spindle will move to the center of the machine. Loosen the collet nut about halfway and insert the tool into the collet roughly three quarters of an inch. Then tighten the collet nut with the included wrenches. Select your tool from the drop-down menu and click Next. The spindle will move to the front right corner of the bed. Confirm that nothing is blocking the tool from touching the T-slot bed and click Start. The tool will descend and locate the distance between the collet and the tip of the tool. Okay, you're set. Now we'll move on to material setup. We recommend always measuring your stock with a pair of calipers for accurate results, but if you don't have any, the dimensions for the included stock for this project are 4.33 inches in X, 3.14 inches in Y, and 0.625 inches in Z. We'll enter these numbers into the material size menu and the preview will update on the right side. Install the material against the back edge of the L bracket and center it in the machine, at least an inch away from the right side of the bracket. Loosen all four screws of the toe clamps and slide the toe clamps into place along the front edge of the material. Press them into place so that the jaw side of the toe clamp is above the back side, then tighten down the back side of each toe clamp and now tighten down the front jaws. Make sure you really tighten these down well and your piece is secure. Then click into Material Placement, Probe Material, and select the Automatic Stock Placement and follow the on-screen prompts to locate your stock. Click Accept, and now the machine and software know the height and exact location of your stock in the machine. We'll jump down to Plan Placement, but because we oriented our G-code file or Work Coordinate System in Fusion 360 on the top left edge of our stock, we don't need to adjust anything here, and we can leave everything in the default zero position. We'll finally go back to Initial Setup and click Install Tool and swap our probe pin for a quarter-inch flat end mill. Perform a tool touch-off, and we're almost ready to begin milling. Lastly, let's review our setup in the Summary Run Job tab and confirm that the preview looks like the model shown in the guide. We can also double check to make sure that there aren't any machine warnings before proceeding. Close the milling machine door and we're almost ready to begin. First, take note of where the e-stop for the machine is. If for any reason you need to quickly abort, hit the e-stop and the machine and spindle will halt. Okay, click Mill Single File and then click OK and the spindle will start up. At any point in the operation, you can pause or end the job if needed. Once complete, you'll have your basic tool holder design. In the written guide, we also provide instructions for how you can customize the blank space along the front edge of the part by adding an engraving, additional pockets, or additional tool holes. Alright, congratulations and happy milling!